we are today with another in our live series with uh, myself and Nazia. Um, and today we're talking about how has COVID impacted your finances? So something that I think has affected many people in different ways. Some it might have gone up, many people we know it is, has gone down. But before we dive into that, let's do some quick introductions. If you don't know me, my name is Una Doyle. I'm a business strategist and coach, and I can help any business to uh, generate another 50K in only 50 minutes. Um, I love to work with creative service providers, and I've set a big goal to help small and medium-sized business owners to unlock 100 million in extra revenues um, and without having to spend more on marketing and advertising, and also to create one million days of smiles in doing so. So over to you, Nazia, if you want to introduce yourself. Thank you very much, Una. Um, so I'm Nazia Hart from Nazia Hart Wealth Management, and I am a financial planner um, that basically helps you make sense of all them funny things called numbers and plan for your future. Um, I've been doing this for over 13 years now, um, love what I do, love helping people and love helping them get the right sort of protection for themselves and their business as well as getting them investments to actually go in the right direction as well. So that's me, Nazia Hat from Nazia Hat Wealth Management. It would help if I unmuted myself, wouldn't it? <laughs> you think we'd be used to that after all the Zooms yeah. <laughs> during COVID, <laughs> even though I used it all beforehand anyway. Um, okay, that's great. Um, thank you for that introduction, Nazia. Um, we got a comment actually um, from Ellen who says, I've been very lucky during COVID. The therapies I provide have been very easy to move online and my clients have been happy with this. That's great. Good job, Ellen. We're glad to hear that you've uh, been okay. And actually for, for me, um, you know, I, I took a bit of a hit initially because I had been um, I actually had spent a few months focusing on um, how I could help some bigger companies with their teams and leadership issues and getting teams really working together. And of course, um, and, and actually had just got um, some, you know, real expressions of interest in my first yes, the day before lockdown happened. <laughs> and that all kind of just went to pot for me. But at least I already had, uh, you know, group coachings that were going along and you know, I was able to make some changes. And in fact, you know, some of the things that I've done have actually helped my business to really, really grow during this time, uh, even after that uh, initial hit. So, you know, I think it's definitely different folks, you know, different strokes, isn't it? Um, so, so what's been your experience, Nazia? Um, very interesting one, just like yourself. Um, I initially, I'm not going to lie, I'll be truthful. Um, when COVID hit, I, I'm a face-to-face -face advisor and I've always um, taken a lot of pride with that. I love human connection. I love uh, doing business in that way. And I initially, the truth is, um, when COVID hit, I suffered. I suffered severe anxiety with the whole idea of going online and um, talking to people online and um, dealing with the whole issue that came with the pandemic, your children, your parents, um, and the list goes on. So I thought to myself, you know something, I'm just going to sit tight for a few months. I I'm okay. I've done my own financial planning. I've got enough money to pay for my bills for the next couple of months. I'm going to be fine. Well, as the pandemic went on, I started to recognize that I had to um, get a bit unstuck from the whole barrier between um, video calling and um doing business in that sense so i adopted uh, doing meetings over zoom and i'm not joking it transformed my business and i am over the moon yes it was scary i didn't like it and um still don't completely love it but i feel that i can be myself now even over zoom as well and my business has now gone back to pre-covid um, days and to be honest my work-life balance has improved um, so much so due to the fact that I'm doing Zoom meetings. So to give you some examples, my clients would normally come in, you have a cup of tea, you do you do the work with your clients and then they go X, Y, and Z. Now, my clients don't even have to make that travel kind to me or I don't need to make it to them. It's really allowing me to become more efficient and provide an amazing service. And it's also working really well with couples, um, couples that would struggle kind of aligning their diaries to ensure so that they can go and see their advisor can now do it in their own 
spaces so if one's working from home and one from the office we can all connect very quickly and we're saving loads of time and time is money so it's amazing so lots of positive stuff's come out of it i'm still incorporating quite a lot of face-to-face -face stuff now and um, but yeah it's been um, amazing things like parents evening having them online is oh why didn't we do that before i wonder and um, there's so many things that have come out of it i did a, a pta last night um parents training association and normally i would struggle attending one at seven o'clock when you know you've got a young child and a family but i could do it over zoom and um, so again i can be part of a lot more things that i wouldn't normally be part of so yes it's been a real positive thing for me and um, but i do also feel for all the you know businesses that couldn't get themselves online um as well so that's me una um now the question i have is um what, what what positives have you taken from from the whole pandemic yourself well uh, i think it's a great question and i think it's something that we all ought to be asking ourselves because you know like we had in the description for this uh for this video is you know don't forget the good that has come out of it because you know things are always about a balance aren't they um and yeah, I think, yeah. yeah yeah and i think for me um i i was already doing pretty much like most everything over zoom and one of the things that was interesting actually in um speaking to a lot of the bigger companies they weren't used to doing that but the entrepreneurs who you know the more solo businesses or those who were just growing their first team um that tend to be in my kind of you know group and and uh, sometimes one-to-one -one coaching um they would uh, they were quite happy to do everything online and all of a sudden i was working with people who they wouldn't even book a meeting using an online calendar <laughs> you'd have to have five emails going back and forth <laughs> so uh, one of the things i think is good is that you know people are a lot more used to that so i think that's that's really good um and um i i think for me it was just having to reevaluate my business you know one of the things that i found for myself is that when i totally focused back again on that audience of the the smaller end of the the small and medium sized businesses um i i actually the the whole sales process of of working with those people i actually found i really enjoyed more <laughs> and i think part of that is because uh just my natural strengths and the way that i work and because it's a very even though the work that i do within people even even in the group coaching that i do is still very individualized but in terms of the sales process it's a product you know i'm not having to do proposals and have lots of meetings with lots of different people within the company um and frankly i enjoyed that more <laughs> and that's not to say that you know um I'm not open to working with bigger companies around the team and the leadership stuff. I am, and I will be doing it again. I'll just be doing it in a different way and making sure that I'm more in flow and that it fits kind of the, you know, the way my company works better. So it probably will be more productized and I may well have another team member doing some of that sales process. Um, so that, uh, you know, I can focus on adding value where only I, can add value so i think that's one thing that for me came out of it a second thing is um was i i looked at my offering and how i was working with clients and so i ended up i've invested in uh some software and some other tools that actually have allowed me to really increase the value of my coaching uh to my clients and like this is how i'm able to you know say i can help any business to unlock 50k in 50 minutes you know as a result of that investment for the training that i did um and the the software tools so so that actually you know it was it was something i i i really thought hard and long and hard about it <laughs> it was not a quick decision i investigated it thoroughly i really did my due diligence because it was not a small investment um and uh but i'm just so so happy that i did and it has really helped my business to to totally up level it's helped me to add mo much more value to my clients and it's really helped me in 
um, enrolling clients as well, because they're much more clearly able to see the value that I add now. So, so those those are are two things I would say that I took from it. And then the third thing is during this time period, I've had a family member, a very close family member, very private. I'm not going to say any more details than that. Who's had very severe health issues um, a few times during this time, and it's been pretty horrible for me actually because. Um, they're in Ireland. I'm Irish, as you might have gathered by my accent, <laughs> and and I'm here in the UK. So um, I, you know, notwithstanding COVID restrictions of actually not being able to visit people in hospitals anyway, I wasn't able to see them. So I have now seen them in the summer, and I'm going again in a few weeks, which would be awesome. Um, but that that was actually quite stressful, um, and. Um, I would say, gosh, I'm actually getting quite emotional. Oh, bless. I'll take off for a minute if you wish. Oh, gosh. It actually just really reinforced for me kind of what I want to prioritise and, you know, just to really make time, you know, for the people that are important to you. Well, on that note, Mona, big hugs flying to you. I completely understand that. Um, I think COVID definitely has taught me the importance of family and time and, you know, how I restructured. I've restructured my entire business around ensuring that I am taking valuable time out because at the end of the day, without our health, we can't have our wealth and wealth yeah. is no good if we haven't got our health so they all work hand in hand and family and connections and people are a huge part of certain personality types um, and obviously me and una are one of them personality types that love people and um yeah so covid has brought a lot of things to the table for lots of businesses and personally as well um and it's been um quite a journey um um, going through it. In the meantime, alongside the work story, I um, decided to create a community called Gratitude Community. And this is something positive that I've come out with in COVID. As I was suffering myself from severe anxiety, myself, being a business owner, um, you know, mom of three, it feels like I've got I've got it easy and I can just handle it all, but we all find things difficult. So that's when the gratitude community on Facebook was created, where I share things to be grateful for every single day. And I've realized that transforming your mindset can really change your outlook. So Absolutely. most important and the most powerful thing we have is not our it's not the knowledge or the money or the health, it's actually our mind. And we have to be very mindful that we're keeping that in a healthy place and checking in with ourselves. So um, before we help others, help ourselves. Before being kind to others, be kind to ourselves. And I think COVID has taught me to be more open. And um, it's okay to share your story and it's okay to let people know who you really are. And people connect with you at a much deeper level when they do that. And um, it doesn't matter if your business doesn't grow at the same level as somebody else's because your goals and your desires are yours, okay? And we can all have our individual goals. So that is primarily why I love what I do is I tailor people's advice process according to what their needs and desires are. It's not, you know, me giving everybody the same advice. It's but tailoring their needs. And my journey of transformation, should I say, started when I went on and did get a business coach. And it's quite strange, but I had my business coach walk, be with me while I was in COVID. It wasn't planned. And it really did break down looking into my business rather than being involved in my business. So having less time traveling has allowed me to put more time into looking at my business and taking that time out to actually put everything away and assess where you are and where you want to go and regularly checking in really really important so i mean my list can go on 
for all the positives. Um, but one that I want to share for, for you guys that may be watching, and um, before we all get caught into the whirlwind of making ourselves happy by spending money. It's a number one phenomenon. People want to feel good, so they'll go online and they'll order something, or they'll go and see a concert, or they'll go out for a meal. We spend to make ourselves feel good, okay? But that spending is only as good as long as we're earning the money. But what happens when things like COVID or situations occur when we, our health can't allow us to make the same amount of income? We struggle. So that brings me to the key point, which is everybody put it in your diaries and do a budgeting exercise every month. Okay? Work out what you're spending and what's coming in. Such a simple thing. And something that we should be educating our children about, and we totally. should be talking to our partners about mm. budgeting. A simple exercise, which, in the grand scheme of things, gets lost because we're either making ourselves feel good or we're trying to reward ourselves by buying that extra treat. COVID taught us all something, which was we don't need to do that much to fill our diaries and times up, okay? We can have quiet spaces and time, and they can be just as rewarding so going back to budgeting it's a simple exercise and every month print off your bank statement just highlight essential and non-essential um, and you'll believe me you'll be amazed and i've done this exercise with a few clients that the amount you're spending on non-essential over a period of three months can sometimes add up to a substantial amount of money okay so be careful of that always think about am i putting a little bit for the rainy day and am i creating enough cushioning in my bank account that if a rainy day happens or a month or two what am i going to do so a lot of yeah. mental well-being is connected to your money okay so covid taught us that we don't have to all be darting around doing everything every moment gone sometimes it's okay to say no and there's alternative cheaper methods um, of making yourself feel good okay so that's my point absolutely um, i think i think one of the things i'd like to pick up on there is you know looking at how we actually define uh essential and non-essential <laughs> so when i do this with my business clients then you know a, a great question to ask is you know is it going to keep the lights on <laughs> so um you know can the business function without this expense um so that you know because it's amazing how much difference it can make that you know if you cut five percent from your expenses that's five percent extra profit revenue extra profit um you know that you have in your pocket so Absolutely. it makes a huge difference so when we cut back but one of the things certain personality types are prone to spend quickly but then also to cut quickly and so it's also not good to cut the things that actually are valuable for your business, the things that are actually helping you to grow your business. I mean, unless it's absolutely necessary, but you've got to be, you know, judicious in deciding, you know, what's really necessary and what, what isn't. And so do that in, you know, for your business, if you're a business owner and do it in your home as well. And I would say, if you do that in your business every quarter, um, because it's very easy to kind of sign up to things and then realize, oh, I'm not actually using this. <laughs> um, or, you know, do you know what I mean? There's like, particularly with um, uh, the software as a service tools that, and you got a monthly payment going out. Um, and actually, if you do have those, quite often, if you pay in advance for the year, you actually get one or two months free. So that's one of the reasons why it's very good to build up um, a cash buffer. And it's brilliant to use the bank accounts that allow you to have different pots or different accounts so you can move money between them and set it aside, take it out of your main account so you just don't see it. And you can do the same for that personally as well. You know, so I have a Monzo personal account um, and I have, you know, different pots with that. Um, that I use to, you know, to save up for different things. So I, I actually have I have a, a fabric pot because, because you know, for buying my sewing stuff, <laughs> and I have a pot for going to Ireland and a pot, for, you know, pots for some other things that uh, we're saving up for as well. So love it. Yeah, I would definitely do that. But get clear on what is and isn't essential because, you know, sometimes people will be, 
you know, like at the beginning of lockdown, you know, like people might have been, oh, well, I have to pay to get my hair done. I have to pay to get my nails done. That's an essential. But then you kind of go through months and months of actually managing without those things <laughs> and realize, oh, no, do, do I actually really need that? <laughs> and I think what other thing a lot of people have done is decluttered as well. And sometimes that can be a way of generating money if you have, you know, things you no longer want or need or use. And then they can, you know, they can become something valuable for something else, you know, for somebody else as well. But and also just getting it out of your house can, can make a big difference to to how you feel. Um, so I'm I'm curious about like I know some of my clients. Um, so I've got um, uh, like one of my retail clients, for instance, and you know they they were very challenged during this time because. You know, they they literally their shop was shut, and they weren't selling online at the time. And they have a type of business that has a lot of products. You know, that like hundreds and hundreds and thousands <laughs> of it. well, yeah, actually, you know, it would be thousands of different products. And so, you know, the the job of getting all those online was actually quite a big job. Um, and so I think in terms of you know, we have to be mindful of the fact that there are some businesses that that did struggle. Now, we did come up with some strategies to help them to be able to sell online. So they started doing Facebook live sales in their group. Um, and so that brought in some income, you know, other things that's uh, doing personal shopping um, uh, over, you know, over their phone um, or tablet. And so they actually had, you know, one to one shopping segments with people where they could show them around the shop, show them the product, uh, you know, colors, all those kinds of things so, so that they could see. Um, and yeah, you know, it made, it made a, um, a big difference, you know, to them to actually have some ways of coming in. And also they've introduced a new product as well. So I think it's, you know, in terms of how COVID has impacted people, what I've seen is that there are some people who they actually took action and made changes in their business um, when COVID happened. And then there's other ones who just went, oh, uh, all right, oh, I'm getting a grant or I'm, I can just furlough myself. And, and for some businesses, that might have been the right thing to do, you know, particularly where they had, you know, maybe they had staff and they, they just wouldn't have been able to afford to pay those staff and they had to furlough them <laughs> or they were able to furlough themselves. I actually wasn't in a position where I could furlough myself, but I didn't want to because I wanted to support my clients anyway. Um, so, you know, if you were uh, a director of a limited company, then, you know, like I, I, I wasn't allowed, <laughs> only staff, uh, you know, were allowed to do that. So it, it is interesting how different people will have been impacted. So I'm just curious, like, you know, what stories do you have, Nazia, about you know some people that you know, uh, whether they're clients or family or friends, and you know what what happened in those situations? Well, I've had, I've got obviously I have I've loads of clients and loads of stories as well, but I have a a, a positive story about a, a young lady, twenty two years old, and um, she uh, had like a market stall kind of business where she used to sell some clothes and she decided to go online and in the COVID year turned over £250,000 and she approached me as she was planning for her pensions and she just took it online um, and it, and it's just gone crazy um, and I love you know stories like that where somebody just kind of thinks right I can do this and, and did it Um I've got you know loads of positive stories of people that did make the effort of going mm. online and again it's about online and that brings me back to the same point again that if so much has gone online and we do use online a lot we also have to start thinking how easy purchases have become how involved emotionally we can get when we see something we either want to support them so we buy something or we just want to feel good so be careful as everything has gone online be mindful that it's become very, very easy to transact a, a purchase as well. Okay, so it goes Which both ways, you know what I mean? Yeah, so, particularly when you've got the likes of Amazon and things where you've already got your yeah. account set up and you just go click, 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 boom, click, click. And it's so, so yeah. good. And I love marketing, like I always say, but the whole purpose behind it is to draw you in. And that's why I'm trying to bring you back a few steps and go, guys, 
you know what budgeting looks like because in COVID year, you did not spend as much, okay? And you survived. Now treat yourself, but budget the treat. So I'll give you an example of my own, what I've done. I've had my nails done forever. I used to always get my nails done. There's a salon next door to me and in COVID, you couldn't get your nails done, so which was fine, or I couldn't get my hair done. So I started to do it myself. And now, yesterday I painted my own nails, okay guys, all right? Um, and it took me 10 minutes and I enjoyed, the, it was quite therapy as well, just to switch off and just paint your nails. Um, for the same price as I was able to get a cleaner into my house to clean my house. So I sat in a nice clean house, which is now going to give me the ability to enjoy my little boy, have a clean space after work, um, yeah. and I'm not exhausted, which means then I can go to, and do a bit of exercise, which is good for my mental health. It's all about moving things around, okay, guys? Um, I find this happen a lot. People go from 30,000 to 100,000, and suddenly they go, I don't know what happens. Why is it that I've got nothing? That's it. When you did that exercise, why have I got nothing left? And when you start doing the highlighter, just get two colored highlighters and highlight an exercise. You'll be shocked. Please, please do it. It's a good take home. Um, well, perfect timing. We got a comment here from um, uh, 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 Becky. So, uh, so she's lucky as her business is primarily virtual uh, and Zoom has been an essential tool. Um, she was unable to utilize grants and while her finances did take a dip, I'll just read the rest of this because it's not showing up on screen, it's too long. <laughs> uh, I was able to use some of that to ensure my personal bills were unaffected. Financial planning really is key. So, Absolutely. Yeah. Um, and I think um, ultimately, there's loads of good factors and there's businesses that closed down, which were really, really sad. Um, but we have to just take on the positives, you know, and there's absolute loads, you know, um, that I've taken, like my, my work, my staff now have this amazing ability to have flexi working hours, which is great, which mm. means they choose when they want to come and go. The beauty of this is this, and I, I kind of recommend it to all employers. Keep your staff happy, okay? If a person's in a happy space, they're going to work happy. They're going to do more. They're going to be more productive, more efficient. So that bottom line of profits we're talking about is going to improve, okay? And um, remember, if you're having a bad day, you're not going to put the same thing. Let them sort their stuff out and come in. Let them go to whatever they need to go to and enjoy life because it's got to be a good balance, okay? So that's another one that I um, kind of love this ability of allowing your staff to have this work life and using people remotely. And I think, um, I know Becky, and she, she does some PA services, admin services remotely. I've started to use um, quite a lot of remote services and they really are good, okay? Yeah. Remote services, they do work. People can work in their own spaces and give you just as much value as if they were sitting next to you. If anything, they can give you more because there's less of the chit chat going on. Because no disrespect, yeah. us women can talk. I'm sure men actually men can as well. Just talk to know what you mean. <laughs> so uh, yeah, so that's that's what I would say. Budgeting, um, structure, and one thing that you brought up a lot, which was you mentioned all these things to do, but working with you, I've learned something. It's all well and good, the fluffy words, but if you don't have that allocated time in your diary to analyze, how the hell are you going to do it? You're not going to just wake up one morning going, I really need to do a budgeting exercise. I really need to look at my profit margins for the month or what I'm spending my money. You're not going to do it because what you're going to do is, is be a foolish fool. You're going to chase the new, new lot of business, but not knowing that that new lot of business is only paying things that you don't even need right now. So look into your business, okay? It's key. And that structure did come because I'm a, I'm a director of my own company. I've not really got somebody telling me. So it's really important to get an accountability partner. That, that's my other recommendation. And yeah. I was questioning, and I want to just say, as I said it, I was questioning the whole process if it was going to be value. Why would I want to spend that money? What would be my reasons? But so much comes out of it when somebody's helping you look into your business and your personality type. 
which also goes hand in hand. Also looking at how your mind works and maybe you've got some stuff that you need to get unstuck yourself or work through because a business cannot thrive if your mind is cluttered. So just as we clutter our houses and when we declutter, we feel this sense of release, the same theory happens with our head. If we are carrying forward stuff from our childhood, past relationships, we are bringing it to the table of business too. And we have to unravel that to understand why we have certain behavior patterns. So I won't go too much into it, but I've learned loads and I'm sure I've got loads more to learn. Just like I said to clients that are doing well with their money at home, I know you're doing really well, marvelous, but I can take you to the next level, okay? I can help you to the next level. What you've done so far is amazing, but I can get you to the next level. I can save you some more taxes. I can make you even more efficient and I can kind of get you um, some investment returns and planning and maybe stop paying that inheritance tax bill in the future. There's so much I can add value to, but you don't know because you don't understand what I actually do because you believe yep. that I'm an accountant or, or the statement I get is, I have an accountant, he'll sort me out or she'll sort me out. Accountants, advisors, two different things, guys. Yep. I want to break that mold, that myth. We are not the same people. We work differently. Okay? Well, you've got different, different focuses and different priorities. You know? Absolutely. So, and, and definitely, you know, accountants can work very well with financial planners as they can with, with business coaches. Um, you know, but but really it's about kind of getting clear on the help and support that you need and putting those structures in place. And I, and I just want to kind of, you know, focus on what you said there as well about putting that, that time aside. And so if you have a plan to follow and you have got that plan in your calendar, right, and, and you structure your time, and I, I'm not talking about in a way that you feel like, oh, I've got a straight jacket on, you know, for a lot of the yeah, yeah. creatively minded people that I work with, you know, they don't like that at all. Um, it's it's not about that. It's actually about the 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 level of structure that will set you free. I, I call it the Goldilocks amount of structure, you know, not too much, not too little, just right. And um, and that I think is is really, really important. And I guess for a lot of people who maybe were in offices and had to work from home, they'll have had to learn how to structure their time um, and and how to kind of work in a different way when they don't have the structure of the office around them um, and, you know, the, um, creating the right kind of space for themselves. I know definitely for some people, that's been a challenge. You know, if you're, if you're in a small space and you've got small children <laughs> and you're trying to do work and homeschool and things like all I can say is hat off to all the parents who were doing that. I don't have any children. So I, I, it was just me and my husband. <laughs> and, uh, and he was unemployed for five months during, you know, last year. Um, so, you know, so that had a bit of an impact as, as well uh, financially. But thankfully, we get on really, really well. So <laughs> there wasn't even one argument about him being here all the time. Um, but, yeah, it, it's, we have to look at, we have to prioritise our goals and we have to put a plan in place to achieve those goals and then we need to structure our time um, and have ways of making sure that we are going to follow through on what we've said we're going to do so having a plan with specific action steps is a really good way of doing that having an accountability partner as nazia said um and um you know the one thing i would say is you know, and I'm not just saying this because I'm a coach, but the best accountability partner you can have is one you're paying. <laughs> just simply because. Actually, I'm going to shout out to that. And I used to think, no, I'm quite capable. I can do anything. It's fine. I can do this. But the truth is, once you start making a payment for something, it changes um, the dimensions of that whole process. And yeah. you take it more seriously. It's a fact. Yeah. I, yeah. And I can say it from experience as well. It's a fact because you think, I want my money's worth out of this now, you know, because you're paying for something. Yes, yeah? so it does make a massive difference to pay yeah. for somebody to become that accountability partner. And there will be some people who've maybe made accountability partnerships work. I, I tried, 
I've tried a number of times over the years to have accountability partners in different areas of my life and business. And they, they never really worked as well as when I was actually paying a, a professional expert in that field. But I think for a couple of reasons, partly because you are literally more invested in the whole process. Um, they mm -hmm. often see things that we might not see. And the danger of doing accountability stuff with your friends, and look, if that's the only thing available to you right now, it's better than nothing, so do that. Um, but the, the chat, make sure you pick someone. You, you need to make sure that your accountability sessions don't turn into chats. So I would say pick someone who isn't a good friend, who isn't a, a close family member, you know, pick someone who is a little bit of a stranger that you know well enough that you got similar values and things, but you want someone who will be prepared to go, well, you know, but without judgment or bullying. And this is a fine balance, you know, to hold someone accountable without making them feel bad, yet having them feel motivated to get something done because they have that deadline and they're going to have to tell that person, you know, what they have achieved or not achieved. So it's a fine Absolutely. balance. So I think finding the right people to do that can, you know, can be a bit of a, a challenge sometimes. Really, I've got it brought up another point, Una, that you brought up about accountability, which runs me on to the next point, which is um, the art of delegation. Okay, mm, the art yeah. of delegation and the importance. I was recently went into a meeting and I had a gentleman say to me, I can do X, Y, and Z, but oh my God, Nazia, oh, I just when it comes to my admin bits I close off i'm just i just can't so basically there's lots of us guys that can do the big stuff but when it comes to the processing of something or the administrating stuff we close off but then we do the exercise of well i don't want to pay for that because again i can do it myself it's a lot of money but the art of delegation when i started it and um and the reason why i have a cleaner or, or the reason why I pay for a lot of my stuff being organized and ready for me and have a PA is it really allows me to be in my own space to be the best I can as an advisor. Yeah. Now, remember the people that are surrounding you when you delegate duties out. It doesn't mean you can't do it. Actually, in certain circumstances, I'm going to admit I'd rather not do it. And now I am happy to be the person to say, I'm not getting involved. I'm not doing it. That's what I'm paying somebody else to do. Um, and there's nothing wrong with, or no shame in saying you don't like doing something or you're not good at something. Because a good CEO doesn't need to know everything. He just needs to have an amazing team around us. Yeah, Absolutely. that's what we do. Like, best leaders will always hire people who are smarter than themselves or who have skills that they don't have. I think all too often, particularly for small and medium sized business owners, they're very tempted to try and clone themselves. You know, you'll often hear people say, oh, I need 10 of me. I was like, no, you don't need 10 of you. <laughs> you actually you probably need three or four people who have very, who have a very different set of skills than you Absolutely. have. Absolutely. Yeah. And that's great, you know, when you said set of skills. I mean, when I did that exercise with you, I forgot what it was when you, when we talked about astronauts and and yeah, the ignition personality profiling tool. Yeah. yeah. How many people out there have ever actually worked out their own personality type? I bet there's not many of you. If you have, put a comment below, let me know, because it'd be yeah, interesting absolutely. to know. Because there's also um, great tools, and they all measure different things. Yeah, so this is all internal work, really. It's work that we're doing on ourselves, but we're doing it. But the impact, it, the positive impact it has on the is on the business. Um, so it's about that structure thing, going back to what you said earlier, um, where certain people don't like rigid structure, but knowing that you have a structure, like I've created a structure, and it's, it's thanks to COVID again, I now invest a lot more time in me in when it comes to exercising. And I'm not doing it for the looks or the body, I'm doing it more for my mind, because COVID taught me that the way to break that barrier of, of mental unwellness is going out. We could only walk at the time. I used to go out lots of walking. Now I've incorporated it with doing 45 minutes of exercise up to up to five days a week, which I'm working on. But now that I'm putting it as a regular in my diary and it's like there, it seems to happen more because okay. patterns that we create that are good for us, 
we can carry them forward but we have to first kind of get on it yeah to do it so if you're struggling with anything like that anything to do with business or personal do 10 minutes say yourself i'm only going to do 10 minutes every day and then build on that and you'll be amazed the power of the mind and how you'll be able to do that um because you'll start in reaping the rewards so for me the weather's changing and i know lots of people are feeling it you start feeling a bit of a wobble or a dip in your emotions it's a normal thing um to, to feel that but if you exercise regularly and think of it as a way of you feeding your business or your family in a way you will be in a much better space if you're in a much better space you're going to be more efficient you're going to use your time more effectively so that's another positive for me um right. looking after my mental health and helping others as well is so important but first what's what's the saying about the cup una um you can't pour from an empty cup yes <laughs> um, i kind of know that feeling so now i always check in with my cup and do a bit of self-care so you know uh, post covid i'm sure lots of people have so before we all get so so busy and we forget that mm. take some self care time out and say yeah. no if you have to I, i think that's a really good point and actually for those people who you know who had been um homeschooling and maybe even still having you know children being sent home because of um uh you know because of positive tests and things um you know just do what you can to make sure that you are prioritizing your own well-being um and you know you, you can often do things like i always go well how can i create some synergies how can i you know achieve multiple things at once which might be well what if you were to exercise with your children um you know instead of trying to find time away from your children you might want to do both <laughs> um just to have the me time as well but even even just a few minutes of you know like there's all sorts of guided apps you've got like cam and brain fm and things like that or even just look things up on youtube like binaural tracks are brilliant so you put headphones in and they have different music frequencies and they help like, <clears throat> excuse me i use them a lot for concentration um and to you know to spark creativity and things even just writing in a journal writing a gratitude list you know or you, you could do that in Nazi's group where you you can put in every day what you're grateful for um it just it helps to focus and uh, i just i just really want to kind of say you don't need anyone's permission to look after yourself and prioritize your own well-being to prioritize your own goals but i'm giving you permission just in case you feel like you can't you know it's 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 just a big thing that i see with a lot of people where they're so busy running after everybody else and they're not taking care of themselves and then they end up burnt out they end up with businesses not growing the way that they want um you know because of that and you know um you know i just want to acknowledge like i've seen with clients i've seen with team members you know how people have had different challenges during this time um you know we're now on the way out of it <laughs> she says optimistically <laughs> um so you know we can do a lot more now so i think definitely taking the the lessons that we've learned about our priorities and putting them in place you know like i like i've already decided like i used to go home to ireland once a year i've decided i'm now going home three times a year brilliant so, you know so like that's a change i've made so it's like okay i'm doing this so and who knows there might even be more we'll see um and it's so so you know decide make a decision make a decision as to what you want and then put the things in place to allow for that um and you know your financial well-being is an important part of that because um it it's about putting the things in place like for me that's been you know me you know starting to grow my team so that you know when i am away from home that things are still happening um that i don't have to be there for them and there's certain things i can do while i'm away but i will make sure to have a block of time where i'm not doing anything <laughs> except spending time with uh, with my um loved ones and you know so just I, i think that's the thing just get get clear get focused get a plan put a structure in place 
and create the support around you that you need. So, you know, the cleaner, absolutely. <laughs> I hate cleaning. Why would I want to do it myself? When I somebody else loves it. So give the job to somebody that loves it. Yeah, exactly. You know, I, I don't like doing admin. So I get as much of that taken off my hands as is possible. I can't have everything. And, and you've got to be really clear that, you know, delegation is not abdication. So, you know, there are certain things that we do need to keep a control of. And even when you have delegated something, you know, um, you know, you've got to look at where you're delegating the task and where you're delegating the responsibility. They're two different things. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. One of the, the, such amazingly well said what you've said, um, you know, with the delegation. And um, it's so true. Those people that naturally want to give, they keep giving and they do get to a burnout stage. Mm -hmm. um, and it's sad to watch because they genuinely don't mean any bad. They are trying to give to everybody else, but forget to check in with themselves. Um, and that's pretty much how burnout exists. And moving on from the art of delegation, um, my final thing that I will take away from COVID is that I learned um, was I started to do quite a bit of meditation. I meditate every day. But the art of switching off, something that I never knew how to do, okay? I had no ability to know when to switch off, okay? I could go on and on and on to the beyond ex exhaustion and more. But now having small little rituals really help with the art of switching off. So things like, um, I don't, I mean, I only have one cup of coffee now, so that was another post-COVID change I, I dropped it to one opposed to eight which was a healthier good but <laughs> i make myself a nice warm fruit tea um of some kind and um, once i put my little boy to bed i make that and that's like me switching up and i put my phone on charge in my bedroom away from me and yes mm. i watch some random bits and bobs on tv but you have to learn the art of switching off because once you have learned the art of switching off, you will have a better restful sleep, which means that when you wake up and you've got that structure that we're talking about in place, you follow your, it doesn't, like you said, not rigid, but a, a nice structure where there's a bit of, you know, eating healthy, you've got your exercise, you've got, I'm going to work on this, this, this. Um, you won't be um, saying yes to more things than you need to, making purchases that you don't really need because you're trying to make yourself feel good. You're just going to make a positive impact to your life, okay? These may seem like very common sense things me and Una are talking about, but I feel that when you're, I call it the washing machine, when you're in the washing machine, you can't see common sense. So maybe I'm hoping that by us me and Una sharing um, the positives, you know, post COVID, that somebody might get a good take takeaway home thing from from our conversation, and that's the hope. So when people do watch it and you have enjoyed anything we've said, if you could comment, and um, it would be so so appreciated. Then me and Una will know that we're not just talking to ourselves. <laughs> Enjoyable as that is. <laughs> so oh, yeah absolutely and it, just something i want to pick up on in what you said is like well it may seem like common sense but just because something may appear to be common sense and it may appear to be obvious it doesn't mean people are doing it absolutely in, in fact quite often I, I there is definitely a uh, and i i don't know maybe it's just the it's too simple syndrome I, let's call it that where people oh. think they, they, people want complex solutions to things, and they're not always complex. In fact, the simpler a solution is, probably the more effective it's going to be, you know. And so, you know, doing little simple things can make a massive difference. I've got a client who, um, they're, you know, they're a newish client, and they've been working a lot of hours. So they've been working in the evening, spending time away from their family. And so, you know, we've only just started working together. We are going to be reducing the hours that they're working, but, you know, we have to do things in, in steps and there's certain things. So like, you know, getting them clear on their weekly structure and, you know, very team stuff and all of that. But I said, okay, well, are you aware that the time you spend in the evening is probably way less productive than if you were to do that same time early in the morning? 
So they've made that switch. They've started doing those extra hours early in the morning. They're now spending time with their family who are loving it, loving it. And um, they're getting to bed earlier. They're having better sleep. Um, and so it's really, really interesting to see how that goes. Because, you know, if you were to spend, say, two hours working in the evening, you could probably spend an hour and a half or even an hour and get the same amount done in the mor in the mornings. Because, you know, at the end of the day, you're, you've used up a lot of your decision-making power. You're probably more tired. So it's just going to take longer to do everything. Now, I know not everyone is great in the mornings. And for some people, you know, that their body clock is much more attuned to the evening. And that's fine. Um, if this is not a blanket recommendation for people. But just to look at, you know, what actually is going to work for you. And over time, we're going to be able to get those hours down so they're not working outside their normal office hours, except for maybe in a case of emergency. You know, stuff happens occasionally. Um, but it ought not be a normal way of doing business, you know? So, and the other thing is, uh, you know, you were talking about switching off. So um, I would recommend getting a hobby. You know, sewing has just been a fantastic thing for me to be able to switch off. Cause you know, when you love your work, when you love what you do, it's so easy to keep yeah. thinking about it. And so a meditation and journey that, that, you know, definitely helps. And, and I, I would say I have been very good at switching off over, you know, in more recent years, as I've, you know, those things have made more of an impact for me. Uh, but definitely this last couple of years, and particularly the last year or so, as I've spent more time sewing, um, it's great because I'm not thinking about business when I'm sewing, I'm thinking about, you know, making alterations to a pattern or how does this fit or, you know, um, you know, what fabric am I going to pair with what pattern? And, you know, it's so it, it's a brilliant way of. So I think sometimes for people to switch off without switching on to something else is harder. So whereas if they actually have a positive focus of something that they can do, that they can fit in with their lives, um, then you know that's that's a good way of doing things as well well listen i i think we've shared some great strategies here um so do please let us know below what you know what's your favorite thing what's something you're going to do that you're actually going to you know take an action on as a result of uh watching this you know let us know below uh we'd love to hear and also you know are there other topics that you want to hear we have other things that you know we have planned to talk about in the coming weeks so do make sure that you join the um, event i'll pop the link below uh, so that you can get notified of all the upcoming events as well so any final words for you nazia i was just going to say highlight top line what we've discussed so we've talked about budgeting we've talked about the importance of family and um, we've talked about the art of delegation and we've talked about switching off um, and structure. Some of the key things that we've kind of talked about as positives for post-COVID. If you want us to talk in more detail about one of them, please just drop us a DM or put it in comments. This is about giving the best information out to you guys. So if you guys can help us, that would be much appreciated. And I just want to say a massive thank you to Una. I don't know how we do it, but it just flows. <laughs> well, thank you, Nazi, as well. I think great input as well. Um, so, yeah, that's a bye from us for now. We will see you next week. See you next bye. week. Bye.